For the past eight years, the Washington Post's fact checker column has rated the truth of campaign rhetoric. It uses Pinocchios to measure falsehoods. Some shading of the facts will get you one Pinocchio. The real whoppers get four. Donald Trump and Bill Clinton both earned Pinocchios this week. To defeat crime and radical Islamic terrorism in our country, to win trade in our country, you need tremendous physical and mental strength and stamina. Hillary Clinton doesn't have that strength or stamina. Believe me, and you know it, and they know it, and everybody knows it. The F First of all, the FBI director said when he testified before Congress, he had to amend his previous day statement that she had never received any emails marked classified. They saw two little notes with a C on it. This is the biggest load of bull I ever heard that were about telephone calls that she needed to make. And the State Department typically puts a little C on it to discourage people from discussing it in public in the event the Secretary of State, whoever it is, doesn't make a telephone call. Does that sound threatening to the national security to you? Glenn Kessler runs the Washington Post fact check department. Good morning, Glenn. You've got a, you've had a lot to keep up with this yeah, campaign. Yeah, it, has, <laughs> it has been a, quite a bit. Well, let, and let's start with Trump's claims about Clinton's stamina, which he it, it was really kind of innuendo there more than a, a direct charge. But you, you looked into this, and what did you find? Well, what 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 we found is that uh, you know, Trump is referring to a variety of things that have appeared on right-leaning websites or in the con conservative news or uh, uh, TV shows and that mm -hmm. sort of thing that look at the supposed health of Hillary Clinton. And none of those things stood up to any scrutiny, that she supposedly was wearing a defibrillator or that she had a brain freeze at a certain point. And so what we did is we went through each of those pieces of innuendo, determined they were based on nothing and gave Trump four Pinocchios because he's given no evidence otherwise that she lacks physical stamina. Yeah, I was wondering how you check somebody's stamina, but you said you were based on all the things that he was saying about her. Right. The, the, the burden of proof is on the speaker. Okay. If you can't it. provide evidence, mm -hmm. you get Pinocchios. Let's go to Bill Clinton because your team has done over a dozen fact checks related to Hillary Clinton's email and you gave Bill Clinton three Pinocchios for the comments he made. Right. Why does that stand out to you? Well, what's happening there is that uh, the Clinton campaign is often focused on very technical things. You heard him talk about the little C's. Yes. And that's, I, I view that as kind of the political equivalent of three card Monte, mm -hmm. where you're trying to you know, distract people from what is core is the problem, which is the problem. She had a private email server, which mm -hmm. she shouldn't have had. Mm -hmm. And even if things are not marked classified, the FBI found out there were classified discussions going on. It doesn't have to be marked classified. Yeah. So they're trying to distract you with the minutia and you know, take away from the big picture. The State Department said yesterday for the first time that that payment of 400 million cash and the release of four American prisoners from Iran are in fact linked, something they had denied up to this point. Donald Trump bit on that, linked Hillary Clinton to it. Any truth to that linkage? Well, I, uh, I covered the State Department for nine years, and this is an interesting example of how, uh, I mean, I've been pondering, is this worthy of Pinocchio's? Mm -hmm. But you can't fact check opinion. Mm -hmm. And it, from a diplomatic standpoint, you often use uh, leverage to accomplish your, your goals. Uh, and you can make a case that this was leveraged. There were two separate diplomatic tracks that came together at the same time. Yeah. On the other hand, you could say, oh, come on. Isn't it, are, we're giving them money, even if it's money that was owed to them, giving them at, virtually at the same moment as the, as the plane is taking off? Well, that's yeah. on the question yeah. of ransom. Yeah. Right. But this was negotiated by John Kerry, not Hillary Clinton, right? Right. Hillary Clinton had nothing to do with this transaction. So if you're blaming Hillary Clinton, uh, that might be worthy of Pinocchio. How often do you hear from campaigns about, about the, <laughs> do, do, do they question. complain when you give them Pinocchios? Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes they, they plea bargain on Pinocchios. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> well, they say, this isn't really a three. <laughs> it's it's really more like a, a two. two. <laughs> <laughs> How does this campaign season stand up to other campaigns in terms of the Pinocchios that you've handed out? Well, the big difference this time is Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. There's never been a, a candidate I've covered like Donald Trump. Because most campaigns, you know, if you give them four Pinocchios, they will say, that's not good, and they'll drop the talking I'm going point. to course correct, yeah. Uh, course correct, yeah. they might adjust the language. Uh, and they also, they engage with the fact checkers, you know, mm -hmm. to make their case. 
The Trump campaign almost never responds to fact-checking inquiries. Mm. Donald Trump will repeatedly say things over and over again that have been demonstrated as false, such as saying that he was against the war in Iraq when he clearly was in favor of the war in Iraq. Mm -hmm. So that's really different. And the result is he has 65% of his ratings are for Pinocchios, <laughs> which is off the charts. Uh, you know, a typical politician is 15 to 20%. Glenn Kessler, thank you. You're Good welcome. To see you.